very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on the run-up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And my name is Uchechuku Onodu. It's a wonderful uh, Wednesday morning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, somebody asked me yesterday what day of the week it was because they have lost count. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. That's what happens when you overstay in the holiday mood. <laughs> Okay, we also have uh, Mr. Bayo Loaki there. Bayo, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, viewers. I am, I am, I, I, I was wishing that the holidays would continue. Uh, um, <laughs> so you have to keep reminding me that, that the holidays are over. <laughs> I said everybody should continue yeah. holidaying, and which is said, no, 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 go back to work. Yes. I wish everything, like the traffic, the yeah. Lagos traffic, mm -hmm. will remain as it is now, uh -huh. while every other thing returns back to normal. But the roads should please remain free. Mm -hmm. Yes, even this morning, while coming to work, uh, I still got here in less than an hour, uh, which is. Uh, uh, still very great news for me <laughs> because, <laughs> because I was trying to like experiment if I get up uh, later and I'm trying to get to the office how much time will I need to get to the office and the roads were still free today mm -hmm. even though people uh, go, are back to work but I'm sure maybe a good percentage uh, is I'm still I'm not feeling. sure it would remain the same until next week maybe by Monday we would have this the real or should I say the natural <laughs> Lagos traffic return yes Okay, well, when we're talking about transportation and uh, how free the roads will be, uh, we're hoping that when the blue uh, rail or the blue line, whatever name it's being called, but these uh, train services really kick off, uh, as the government has promised that it is this first quarter of the year that is going to kick off, a lot of people will have every information they need mm -hmm. about how that thing is going to be operated. Um, I've been seeing a video on WhatsApp, a uh, few times, but I never opened it until this morning. And that was when I got to know that the blue line is going to be powered by electricity. That's what Lamata was telling us, mm. that it's going to be powered by electricity and it's going to be like 750 volts. Whoa. Now, the normal uh, voltage in the house for domestic use is usually like 250 where you have your heat, heater, your iron, your everything, but it's like 250. But this one will be powered with about 750 volts. That's three times the domestic uh, vo voltage that we have. That means, and according to that video, when that thing is in operation, anybody who as much as crosses the line could die. I don't think cold is the world. Will die. <laughs> will die. <laughs> Wow. I, don't, I don't know, Bio. I, why do these people keep doing this? Because as soon as they knew that the rail lines would be ready, that information would have been going hand in hand. So mm -hmm. that whoever hears about the rail should hear that you, are, you could die or you will die if you cross the rail line. And I'm afraid for the people of Lagos who actually trade on top of the rail lines. <laughs> what can we do? Well, um, I think this phenomenon is uh, associated with developing countries. I remember when I was in India, um, you would find so many people on top of the train. There are always more people on top of the train and inside the train, you know. Uh, but of course, not the metro, because India also has the metro, you know. The metro is powered by electricity. You know, that doesn't happen with the metro. But the normal locomotive trains, the diesel-powered trains, you, you always had that phenomenon. Uh, but specifically to what you mentioned regarding the blue line, they must be powered by the blue and red lines. They, they have seen the uh, terminal buses, the one at National Theatre and the one on Marina. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, but then that beauty could become a tragedy, God forbid, if, like you said, people do not respect uh, the right of way of the train. Mm. And I agree completely that uh, between now and when the, the system eventually starts, the Lagos State government needs to intensify publicity or about the risks uh, you know, that will involve 
crossing or staying on those lines. I, I myself will never understand why people trade on rail lines. And both the Nigerian Railway Corporation and the Lagos area, uh, Lagos Metropolitan, I don't have the full, ac the full uh, acronym for Lamata now, but they have the responsibility to begin now to, to encourage or dissuade people from trading on the rail lines. It doesn't even mean, so it shouldn't be because the train will be powered by electricity. Nobody should be trading along the railroad. It's, it's, it's unreasonable and it's risky. It's, it's really terrible. If you go to Agege, for instance, there's a, an entire market on the rail line mm -hmm. because that's what I can say. You're crossing over from the other side to where you're going to go to Meru, um, uh, Abulegba, and the rest of and those the And the Yaba market as well. Yeah, so people are on the rail lines. Wherever you go, in Ikeja is the same thing. That's where they have a market, so to speak, on the rail lines. And I'm wondering, this habit has been there for, like, forever, and it's going to take a lot to get the people off the rail lines because, first of all, that's where they found the space mm -hmm. to trade. And what are you going to do to make sure that these people will readily leave the rail line. But so, like you said, it has to be very aggressive. That's where they found space. You know, that leaves a question in my head. Is that place designated to be a marketplace? No. That is another question that needs to be answered because I, I think it's a habit that we have in Nigeria. People find space and they just start trading. Mm. And before you know it, it keeps growing and then they name it, it becomes a marketplace. Mm. Uh, but trading on a rail track is never... Even the uh, local locomotive train is even... Very, very dangerous, dangerous yeah. then you cannot imagine it's a, an entire system powered by such high voltage of electricity i think uh, there is a lot of awareness that needs to be created and we haven't even started i mean there are people that don't even know that the blue line is coming in no, the first place you don't know. You <laughs> should get and then the fact that it's going to be powered by such high power el electricity power is a lot of work on the on the part of the lagos state government and the orientation agency mm -hmm. what what are people doing? This is your work, or hmm. I'd not call anybody. <laughs> <to Russia. laughs> what do you see? Like, so, like, like so we're so saying, so quickly, to add to Uche, I think the religious organizations can play a very big role in helping to sensitize people. Because these days, the majority of our people, it's what the imam tells them and what their pastor or their geo tells them mm. that they do. So the Labour State Government and the Nigerian Railway Corporation will want to enlist the uh, support of the religious clerics to help broadcast this information to their followers. Okay, because, yeah, that's good. Because, like in Lagos, for instance, do you know the name of the ballet of your, <laughs> of whoever, wherever you're staying? And that's the chief. You would mm. not know. There is no community meeting, like village meeting that people will go or a town crier that will go around and tell people this is the thing. But like Bio said, going to the churches, I think that's a very, very good move. But again, um, like you asked, is that place designated for trade? No, it's not. But why are those people there? The circumstances that led them to, uh, to colonizing that space, so to speak, <laughs> to make it uh, a, a trading complex mm. should also be factored in. And question. Because, because now, when they leave that place, that means they are leaving a place that they have been having some livelihood. There should be some kind of provision where they can go back to. Because, like the Akege I mentioned, if you leave the rail lines, I don't even see any other place. The, the place that is supposed to be like the market itself is mm. saturated already. So when these people leave, where are they going to? Is there an alternative ma market, a space that people can say, the government can say, okay, you must live here, but when you leave, go to this place and get a space, even if you need to pay for it and, and do your trading, mm. because families will be affected. And this is, these are legitimate traders, but in an illegal space. So what do we do about them? So from all sides, I think we just need to look at the whole picture. I mean, what happens what when the system that is supposed to uh, designate a proper space for the markets mm -hmm. uh, and give these people yeah, where to trade, the system sees that they are on illegal space, but it's also taxing them yes. on top of the illegal space. So how do you now tell somebody that you've been taxing on an illegal yeah. space to get up and go somewhere else? Mm. These are the issues. 
Oh, well, uh, but um, we do hope that there will be some kind of solution. And um, when that rail line really starts, my concern is that we should not have to lose someone mm. before the message sings. Let whoever is responsible carry this message and, you know, broadcast it the way they can broadcast. We can do only as much as we can, but um, the bulk of the work will be left in the hands of the agencies that should liaise, like Bayo said, with mm. the religious bodies and all that. Give them the correct information so that when they're relating it, they will also know what to say. But it's, well, we, we also talked about... Um, yeah. Yeah, PDP, elections, and so many other things that we, we need to talk about. But um, I think the crux of the matter is how prepared are the candidates for this year's election that should form or that will form... Uh, the basis of our discussion. Today we are going to be concentrating on just four of them and that is the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, the Labour Party and the New Nigerian People's Party. I'm talking mm. about Atikwa Abubakar, um, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, Peter Obi and Kwankwaso. Okay. So, any other time, we'll discuss about other people, but for today, we're going to be looking at these four uh, candidates, uh, how prepared they are uh, for the 2023 general elections. And the figure of registered voters for the 2023 general elections has a little above 10 million uh, difference as against the 82 million people registered for the 2019 elections, in which only about 28 million turned up to vote. Uh, but this could be higher this year because of heightened interest in some quarters and perceived disenchantment among some citizens across the country. Uh, but beyond this, how prepared are the candidates gunning for the plum job? Projections from both local and international monitoring groups had it that there might be a stalemate at the end of the ballot next year. Uh, it might run into a runoff. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Sounds like runoff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that also uh, begs the question, how prepared also are the people who are supposed to select from among the people who are contesting mm. to get the number one job in Nigeria? As it stands now, INEC has come out to say that 6.7 million PVCs are yet to be collected. So... Is Nigeria prepared? Because the difference between the last election and now might be insignificant if the new entrants, for instance, refuse to collect their PVCs and the old people who registered just because maybe they were made to register failed to collect their PVCs. Mm -hmm. So you need to collect your PVCs because it ends on the 22nd of January. By the way, we're being joined by two gentlemen who will be talking to us or discussing with us on these issues. We have Ibrahim Abdul Karim, the DG Obi Dati Independent Presidential Campaign Council. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us, Mr. Abdul Karim. Good morning and thank you for having me. We also have a member of the PDP, Barista Tunji Abdul Hamid, who has also joined us. Good morning and welcome. I don't think he's available yet, but hopefully he will be joining us before the end of the conversation. Okay, good. So we have just one man to talk with <laughs> us. Let's begin with you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Abdul Karim. Um, yes. When we talk about preparedness, as, especially at this time, uh, we talk about how, how we've, your candidates or the candidates have been able to permeate uh, the citizenry, go to every nook and cranny of the, uh, the country. Mm. With your principal, for instance, uh, OB, uh, Peter Obi, there is this talk about the fact that he may have a following in the south, but he has not been able to make inroads into the north as well as he should. So it might affect his uh, uh, not only campaign, but the election outcome might be affected by his inability to capture the north. Is this a true story or what is the real scenario? I think um, uh, people are just uh, miscalculating what they are seeing only on the social media and also on the print media. Mm. Um, Mr. Obi don't have to be pushing himself forward uh, much more deep into the north and leaving his own base. If 
going to do a campaign or you want to win an election, your base is very important to you. Then you now think of where is going to be your battleground and also decide how you are going to have your entry and how you are going to win. Election is just like a game. But what we have is that we have one of the best candidates in the person of Mr. Peter will be on the ticket with him with uh, Betty Babamed. What we are presenting is a new Nigeria. What we are presenting is somebody that is competent, somebody has done it before, and then people can really look into him and say, yes, this person is going to be, uh, he is going to take responsibility on anything that is going to happen with us. So this, uh, in the north, is not about the billboard. Uh, we have what is called for the north in our place, what we are doing for Mr. Peter Obi. And uh, we have an app which is called the Town Hall app. And we base our activities in 176,000 polling. And uh, we are bringing in people, talking to them based on what is happening in the country. Everybody knows that um, Nigeria is being blessed. We have everything that we need to be one of the big, biggest countries in the world. Or the lack of leadership has brought us where we are today. So in search of this leadership, everyone in Nigeria has come to testify that this is the major problem we're having today. Having a group of Nigerians that believe that Nigeria can work again. And also, we have to stop the bleeding. So in trying to make the inroad into the north, we have to start with the young people. Because in the north, you will not have a place where you see just elite just endorsing you anyhow. Um, it's the people and the narration you are going to put in the airwaves, talking to people in the pulpits, and also what we call Medelisa, just like their panels in the, in, the, in the southern part of the country. And the radios are very important to us because that's where we send the information. And the information is just simple. From 1999 to today, any politician that you know, or somebody going very close to politics or being going close to politicians, his life has changed. Like for example, you can see PEs, SCs, anything you can think of. Their life has changed. Their children maybe are not even storing somewhere outside the country. But if you look at the masses, the voter, you see that his life is going backward from 1999 to date. If you know somebody that is poor, that is living in a rented apartment of 100000 that he can afford before, now he cannot even afford a 20000 maybe rental, unless he is part of that system that is uh, siphoning money from, this, from, the, from, from Nigeria. So what we see is that, okay, what is the major problem that is not giving us what we want? And we realize that for us to get that leadership, we have to first unite and create citizens. Just a moment, Mr. Unity is very important for us. So in the north, and all the things you are seeing happening in the north today, is the injustice that is causing it. From the banditry, to the kidnapping, to the, all the things that you have seen, religious fight and other things you are seeing, is the issue of justice. And if you want to move a country forward, we have to bring somebody that his main purpose of his candidature is to unite the country. Not somebody that will just look at you and tell you he is his turn, he just wants to become president, and that is his long term ambition. And he will do it even with a Muslim Muslim ticket, irrespective of how he wants it to do, he just wants to win. And when people ask him, we don't have this issue before, for example, we don't have the issue of Muslim Muslim as part of our fault lines. We have a lot of fault lines in this country, but it's not part of it. But if you bring it on your ticket today, you now add another barrier on top of the already existing variables that break us apart. So that's why I say I always call it a toxic ticket. If you want to rule or you want to govern or you want to uh, push a country forward, what you need first is the unity. Look at Rwanda as a case study. Rwanda had serious problem. They went into war in 1994. But when they come out, the first thing they do is they forgive themselves, close the, 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 fault, the fault line, because the fault line is 2 C by 6 Hoti. Right, now Ibrahim, they make it Ibrahim, there is no Hoti, there is no Hoti, it's just, just Rwandans. And now it's working for them, and they are building a new country. Ibrahim, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so we're looking at, we will get to the candidature of your principal. Uh, that is a, a conversation we're going to have today. I'm not talking of another edition of this program. But for now, we're looking at the preparedness. And it, uh, uh, my question is coming from where my co-host stopped. He asked about how that, you know, your your uh, principal, it's been said that he has not been able to permeate the North. Apart from that, there has also been conversations around structure uh, in the Nigerian uh, parlance. Uh, there has been talks about how that the Labour Party presently does not hold any political position in Nigeria. The Labour Party uh, does not have uh, establishment in different parts of the country. And, and these are questions, you know, that beg to be answered, especially for people who are rooting for your principle and your, and your party. How do you react to that? And what do you have to say about that structure? To yeah. There are two types of campaign. You can do a conventional campaign and you can do what is called a protest campaign. What we are practicing in the Labour Party today is called protest campaign. How we are going to harness all the angers Across the country, people are not happy from Taraba to Peninkabi, from Bayelsa to Elena and Sokoto. Everybody is angry with what is happening. Parents are angry, workers are angry, uh, farmers are angry, everybody is angry. It is called protest campaign. What, what we are set, selling is a new country in a new Nigeria. You can't do it within the structure that caused the trouble for the country. So if he wants to go on the convention, that's why even us in the Independent Campaign Council, we are not, uh, we are not so eager in trying to go into uh, uh, rallies to, do, to showcase ourselves as APC or as PDP, rent crowd and do, do rallies. That's not what we are, our intention is. So we created what is called a hybrid of online, offline structure, which happens to be uh, used in Kenya uh, to win for Ruto. Uh, it's used in Malawi and other places. In Kenya, they even just use what is called a WhatsApp application. In each WhatsApp, they create a platform for themselves. They create what they call a, like, like a town hall application. In that town hall, in every WhatsApp group, you put up like a, the pulling unit group, and you put up all the people that want to vote for you. And you time to time, you sit down, you talk, discuss about how you're going to win at that particular level. So other people will think that you are not on ground. Nobody is seeing you. But actually, you are on ground. That's the why this is technology. This is the age we are. So a lot of people are saying, Mr. Obi is not on ground. You go to Bauchi, you go to Sokoto, you go to remote place in Benekabi. You will see people going door to door, house to house, showing people what Labour Party is all about and telling people this is the party you're supposed to vote. And in every community, they have a community, a community that has sit down. What you even don't know about the, uh, about the Obi movement is that we're even going to do a mock election a week before the election and test our strength. As I talk to you today, go to online and download from www.obidati.support. Uh, uh, you will see the town hall application. That town hall application is when you enter, once you register, it will take you straight to your polling unit. Once you go to your polling unit, the first thing you do is that if you see yourself alone, that means there is nobody that registered on that platform. So it's your duty now to bring 10 or 5 people into that town hall. You can move yourself to the word level and see within that word how many of you are there. You can move yourself to the to the to the to the to the local government and see how many of you are obese supporters, obedient at that local government. And you can post videos, you can do your meetings. That's how we monitor them. So on the election day, anything that happened, we snapped as uh, as uh, uh, Beavers is snapping and sending. We are snapping and sending too. We have our agent in 116 local government, not only one, we are creating 10 power powered. We are putting up, we are putting up a structure that it will last in the next hundred years. We are not going to leave it with just because we are putting a president. No, we are put, that's why in the big tent, we, we created this, uh, what they call independent presidential campaign council. The idea is for us at the long run, even if he become president, it will be like, uh, like, like a reporting or, or, or feedback mechanism for him to know how he's been faring in trying to deal with the, uh, the problems of this country. So if we have every person that is reporting from pulling it, that means every contractor that is giving a contract to construct a road or to do an uh, uh, electricity issue or whatever he wants to solve, or this uh, feeding program, we will come from that program 
uh, from that application and tell our principal whether that thing is happening or is not happening. And also to see how we are going to collaborate with the state and the local government to move this country forward. So it's, an own, it's, a, it's a system like, for example, the big tent that we started as a, as a third force is now becoming the first force. What people are not understanding is that last eight months, you don't even know about the Labour Party. Nobody even knows about anything that is going to happen with the Labour Party. Where, look at where we are today. Look at the endorsement that are coming. Look at the number of people. Look at how other big parties that are, they are from 1999, they've been in existence. Look at how they are feeling about what is happening today. This is what we are saying. We are not saying that we are, we are where we want to be, but at least nobody will take it away from obedience that they have done a very, very good job in the election of 2023. For example, if not without, if not because of uh, um, obedient movement and also uh, the other uh, opposition party, we will not be having the excitement that Nigerians are having today. Everybody will just be just doing his thing because he knows how these two other candidates become a presidential candidate. Some of them with their very, very toxic ticket, like uh, the Muslim Muslim ticket. And you can see how they pay the money to become president. And we can see the allegation coming from all quarters of uh, the other country. So Nigerians feel that we need to have somebody among these four candidates where young people can rally around and create a Nigeria that they believe in, a Nigeria that they want. And then we choose Labour Party, we right. choose Mr. Uh, Peter uh, Obi, and here we are today, and we are putting a very right. robust... You, you, you do know, you do know that we are trying to have a conversation yeah. here. So it'd be nice if you listen to us, and we listen to <laughs> no, you. I'm not... I'm not so no, that... Because uh, yeah, we've been trying to get your attention, yes. and, you know, so, don't, yes. Don't, don't worry, um... We will come back to you to explain more things. You've talked about a lot of technology that has gone into that. We do hope that uh, the political climate in Nigeria and that of Kenya can mm. be the same. But uh, there are specific questions we're going to ask you uh, in, in a bit. But right now, we're being joined by Barrister Tunji Abdul Hamid of the PDP. And we're glad to have you join us finally. Welcome to the program, uh, Barrister Tunji. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Okay, before we hand you over to our colleague, Bayo, who is standing by, ready to uh, <laughs> ask a lot of questions, uh, but we would just like to know, when you talk PDP, now everybody remembers the G5, mm. and we don't know how that's going to work, because before now, a lot of t people from your party that we ask questions about what is happening, the embroglio that is happening in your party, they've always said, either they'll tell us that, the problem will be solved, mm. it's a family thing, or they will tell us that the people who are involved are insignificant, you can move on without them. But right now we hear that your party is worried. I don't know whether you really are worried or not, but the endorsements have come from Edwin Clark, for instance, the Pa De Banjo, for instance, the uh, former president OBJ, uh, Obasanjo, uh, for a different party other than yours. And even then, we hear that the G5 has had a meeting with the APC presidential candidate. What are you really doing to go into this election 2023 with a divided house will be disaster for you? What are you doing to make sure that this never happens or if these people become the ones that will leave the party, you have a plan B? What are you doing? Yeah, I think uh, let me also put it an impression. There is no crisis now in, in my party. There is no problem in my party. We are not worried. We are not disturbed. Uh, although, as a, as, as, as a political party, we will love let me, everybody. Let me get it clear. Are you PDP? <laughs> because you keep saying my Because party. it might seem like it's a different party we're talking about. I'm talking about I'm, PDP. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about PDP as well. Okay. You may be seeing it from okay. another angle. I'm, okay. seeing it from, I'm seeing it. It's okay. what I'm talking about. Go ahead. I say there is no crisis. There is, there is no problem in PDP. There is no crisis. The candidate is not worried. The party is not worried. The party is not by uh, a disturb as uh, you know that you know, we may be disturbed in a way because as a party we would love everybody to be in our party. In fact, if all the million Nigerians, uh, twelve million million Nigerians have been in our party, we'll be happy with it. So if we have somebody leaving or whatever, it will not, will not be happy about that. But at least that that is not disturbing us. That is not a good uh, a, a major uh, concern as, as it is now because uh, if you look at the party, we have moved on since immediately after the primary. The the first party to conduct this primary is, is, was the PDP. The first party to start uh, is, uh, to, to, to bring out is a uh, uh, program is a PDP. The first party to, to start campaign is a PDP, and we have been we have done over seventy percent of or sixty percent of the camp of the rally, and we are doing our work. You see, the Labour Party are struggling to.
to give us a, what they are doing now in terms of a setting up a platform and this and that because they, are, they don't have that structure on ground already. All this thing he's talking about is already there in PDP over 20 years ago. So we have the structure on ground. So we don't have a, a, to bother ourselves to start setting up a new group, a new a, a platform or whatever to see whether or not people will be carried along. So as far as I'm concerned, though we have problem with the members of the party who are grieved, that is the G5, we have a, that is, that's not that's not limited to PDP alone. All parties have their own uh, 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 fear uh, uh, of the crisis. Even the Labour, Labour Party, that's a new party, he has his own crisis. The the public secretary is, in the, is there's a problem with it. The 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 DG campaign was recently set set aside because of the uh, court court case, and the, the new one that, that was brought in, there's an issue on it regarding is, uh, whether he's a member of a PDP or of a Labour Party or a Senate Labour Party. The APC, the same thing. There is issue of uh, the Dogara left. A, 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 a APC because of Muslim, Muslim ticket, the Daniel Buala left, so many other people are leaving. So, and there are other crises there. The only problem we had, the, why the PDP own has been uh, taken this way is because the people involved. In other words, one of the members of the part of the group, they are not, they are, they are, they are making statements that is not uh, proper for a leader to be making in that in that regard. That, that's why we are seeing that they are not, in, in, in court, uh, we, do, we do respect, they are not doing it uh, responsibly. And uh, that's why you are, you are thinking there's a problem. A much problem in the in, in the party compared to other parties. All other parties have their own uh, fear of uh, uh, the crisis. So it's not limited. The crisis is limited to only PDP, and that crisis uh, of G5 or whatever is not is not is not a barrier. It's not a clock for the party to win election. We with or without them, PDP will win the election. And we are doing our best. We are preparing ourselves. We are going along ahead with our campaign. We are we are working our plans and we are doing everything uh, doable to ensure that things are done and the party win the. Uh, 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 on, on the February 25th, uh, 2023. And uh, I'm telling you that. You may be seeing crisis. I, I'm not seeing crisis. The party is not seeing crisis. We are not seeing uh, any issue that can make us lose that election. Uh, two gentlemen in your hands for now. Um, Thank you, young Gu. I, I actually lost you for a moment, but I had the last part. And, and it's been quite interesting listening to uh, Mr. Ibrahim Abdulkari, the DG of Bidati Independent Campaign Organization as well as Barista Tunji Abu Hamid. Um, if I just uh, just start with uh, Barista Tunji because he spoke last. Um, there are three words. I want you to, to tell me which, because you use the word crisis, okay? And that, the, okay, yes, there's crisis, but it's nothing to be worried about. But is what you have in the PDP a disagreement? a conflict or a crisis because the elections like you have rightly observed are just one month and maybe 10 days from now and the optics indicate that this little crisis you have spoken about does not seem to be going away and if you look at the number of voters and the the, the influence of governors or your state has 3.5 million voters Rivers has maybe a little bit less than that. But that's a sizable chunk if you consider the fact that your candidate will battle against uh, a, a candidate who is influential in Lagos with 7 million voters, and the candidate who is influential in Kano, uh, which is next to Lagos. So you can see where we are coming from. When we think, and my colleagues think, it's bigger than what you have said, or maybe you can assure your supporters. It, it, it is not bigger. It's not bigger. It's the way you are looking at it. And uh, let me correct an impression. I did not say crisis. I said we have a disagreement in our party between a, 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 a party members, a group party members. So it's not a crisis. It's a, it's a, it's a disagreement which uh, we are trying to see how we can resolve. But unfortunately, the way Amanda, one of the parties, is going about it, it may make it difficult in a way. And uh, to, thinking about uh, the, because we have issue with the G5 uh, governance. That will affect our chances of, of winning the election. I don't think so. If you look at the history of this uh, country, look at 2015 when the election was conducted. The PDP was in power at that time. The the, the, the PDP won all the all all his all his all his all his, all his uh, what's it called? The, uh, the, the got major votes in the southeast, southwest, and the uh, uh, southeast and the south 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 south, south. And even including river states, including your state. Yet we were not able to win the election to become the president. The president Baba Buhari, who is the president today, he won in 2019. He did not win in South South. He did not win in Southeast. He did not win in River State. 
here yeah, today become he, he's a president yeah so if we are saying because uh, we are losing south south or we are losing south uh uh state, that, that that is a crisis for us not to win election i don't agree with that and if you look at uh, uh or your state governor wiki is not like he's, he's talking he's not fully in charge uh, uh of or your state in terms of uh, uh controlling the votes in your state in other words the governor governor Mackinde himself cannot sit and say i am sure with even without crisis uh without disagreement with the party that i will win the election or is always 50 50. so it's not it's, in fact, as, far, as, as far as i'm concerned the governor wiki is not putting the party in crisis but he's putting himself in crisis if you listen to the uh, news yesterday some some stakeholders major stakeholders in the party came out and said look governor you are your home we have it article so how he's going to do it i don't know so uh, okay. as, far as, I'm, as far as i'm concerned the crisis uh, the problem is not for, for the pdp the problem is for those who are fighting those governor we can ask candidates who are running under the pdp in river state how is he going to do it governor autumn has it as 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 candidates who are uh, is, is also contesting election in uh, uh, uh in the Benue state he has seven local government to control out of those seven local government four or so are within the i use a a, 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 a vicinity so how is okay. going to do it i was going to win I was, I, 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 in terms of fault number of faults it may affect our party but in terms of general results it may not it may not affect anything yeah okay thank thank yeah. you very much thank you very much uh, uh to to um mr Ibrahim Karim, thank you very yeah. much also for your 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 uh, perspectives um some people argue that for your candidate to be well prepared for this election he must consolidate his home base which you have alluded to as well by you know when you spoke earlier on but also he must also make major inroads into the middle belt and into the northeast now we don't seem to see that happening and if you look at his home base all these issues with ipop with esn stopping people from going out not a few people believe this can actually undermine a cohesion of voters given the block uh, votes you know as a base for your for your candidate what would be your reaction to to this uh, those who make these assertions first um we have a press release uh, just uh two days or three days i don't know why your tv station is not here at least the app of said they are not going to announce any seat at home during the election and they are not going to announce any big curtain of the election they will want people to go out and vote and um some of these things that are happening the bombing they were seeing some of us are even seeing that there is hands of course of the other opposition party and other people that are just trying to make sure that at least they deny us having the base that we want and um we are talking to a lot of people the security agencies are on top of their uh, uh work now at least they have apprehended the the mastermind of the killings and also uh they have done a lot of uh, work within the last uh two months because of what INEC has told them about that if the situation has not changed then there is going to be problem for the election to conduct to be conducted and similar but as i tell you no matter what you see happening in the southeast is just a baby if you compare to what is happening up in the north here most especially in the northwest we have more than 40 local governments as i talked to you today that election will be very difficult for them to conduct in that place if you know from kwara to mina you know only river that is there is one i think his name is mustafa also is a, a swap person the person that planted the the the, the attack and the uh oh honey oh that's the they registered when the president has uh, went to they said they are looking to see how they are going to kill mr president and things like that you see in the up north here there is no family that you can see that is not affected with this banditry and also this kidnapping issue that is taking place as i talked to you today this morning people have been kidnapped and there's a lot of i know of a town in i think in Kasana, around those amount and so that they have taken almost four four hundred able men uh as ransom because they, they they used to what they used to do is that they ask a a local government or a town to pay a ransom for them to do the farming or to do their activities so they will just come and tell you give you a letter that you're supposed to bring 20 million so people has to put themselves around to see how they are going to arrange 20 million or they will come and kill you so this has been happening for almost getting to three years now you understand what do you think so if you're thinking that okay it's the base that is so being affected no it's the whole country that the skin security is affected so what we are just saying, what we are doing in Labour Party is that we have to tell Nigerians the truth, you understand? Because the idea of us both bringing APC in 2015 is just to ask questions about what is happening with Nigeria for the six years of PDP. That's the idea of 
people come together and call themselves progressive at that moment. And what do you, do you think, what we are asking before is that we had a national security advisor that said that the Boko Haram uh, uh, members are in the cabinet of Jonathan that time. And then Nigerians are so worried when they see him, uh, his decent crash and and, and, uh, and, uh, and he died, that's Azazi. And then a lot of Nigerians want to see what is the truth about that. So people come together to see, okay, this subsidy issue, uh, uh, who is subsidizing, who has already said it before, and all these issues, come to see how we're going to check what has happened. And then instead of us to have answers, we have more questions. So what we but, 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 but Mr. Abdukan, do you are you making an inroad? Do you agree with those who say for your candidate to be well prepared for this election, he must win his base, he must make an inroad into the Middle Belt, and he must make an inroad into the Northeast. And yes. I, I, I agree with all you have said about yes, security, security being nationwide. But what is your candidate doing? You you had our yes. Mr. Tunji by Mr. Tunji Abdul, Abdul Hamid. You know, told us you know what they are, how they see the election going, even if they don't have certain states. Okay, we are doing our campaign every day, every blessed day. Somebody is going into the hinterland and doing campaign, showing candidate. I have videos because from our mobile app, we are we are we are we are monitoring all the activities. Every blessed day, a radio program is being played in Sokoto, in Kano, in jingles are being played. Every blessed day, we're having programs on radio talking to people how they are going to walk away from these two toxic tickets and also for us to get Russia us a new Nigeria and also the reason for us to forgive ourselves and create citizens that will pull this nation forward. You have to see traction coming to that particular person. You have to see what we are trying to do in trying to, for example, in Kaduna, last week we do what is called free ride uh, from all the locations in Kaduna, the 2020 vehicle for each location that we want to do. And then it's flagged up by the by the candidate, can, 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 candidate. And we also take people, and I can show you, I can send videos to you, why people have been happy, at least helping them to come out from one place to another. It's in terms of uh, meet, reaching out to those that are undecided voters. Because in this election, it's not about the PDP guys putting themselves in a, in a, in a stadium, bringing their members from all the local government, giving money for people to bring people, and now you do rallies. That's not what campaign is all about. Campaign is going to talk to those people that are undecided which are in the big number that's what we are doing everybody's anger look for example i give you like almost 40 local governments have been occupied by banditry in the north we are talking to them did you see any problem sol solution coming to you that actually is no i hope the apc guy will be here to, uh, to, to see how he's going to experience the uh aswadi gula and metubu with this apc government but now we're standing let's talk about the the the, 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 the pdp what we always tell people is that PDP, the major problem Nigerians are having with PDP is that Atiku is not supposed to be their candidate. They have a chance to give Nigerians not something that will cause trouble to us in years to come. For example, I let's tell people, if the argument Atiku is doing today is that he's not coming after a Muslim northerner, Buhari, he's coming to continue from what where Jonathan stopped. That means he ignored the eight years of what happened to us. So what happened is that Maybe if Labour Party, for example, we don't win, and now I become the, the major name in 2023, and now still look at the Eastern people and tell them, don't worry, this is not PDP, this is not APC, it's Labour that is going to bring Ibrahim to come and continue another northerner from Sokoto after, after Atiku. It's not good for the nation. It's not good. See, in candidacy, the first thing you're supposed to do if you want to do any candidacy, in, as a party, you're supposed to have your caucus. That's why you have BOT. You sit down and listen to the ears of the people. What are the complaints of Nigerians? Nigerians are bitterly, seriously seeing a government of Buhari running a nepotic system and also one-sided uh, appointment. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Abdul Karim. I think you made your point clearly. Um, just to give a quick chance to Barista Tunji Abdul Hamid, um, is your candidate going to be able to withstand? You had what... Uh, 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 Ibrahim Abdul Karim has said, uh, this is something which is a major issue, by the way. Uh, it's not just him alone saying it. There are those who have also written quite a lot about that. That not only has Alaji Atiku Abubakar uh, you saw the rotational uh, ticket of your party or arrangement, but also even the chairman of your party is and, and the presidential candidate are from the same place, which is an issue 
you have with your five governors. And it's something which is resonating in the country. You must admit that. But what's your reaction to that? I think I, dis I disagree with them, saying that we're allowed to at 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 or stop the rotation as a, a pattern of the PDP. It's not correct. If you look at the, if you look back at our history, the last president from the from the from PDP is from the south. President, former president Jonathan. Jonathan. So I, I, I see, you know, they are, they are, some people are making mistakes. They are looking at PDP as as Nigeria. In other words, yes, we are because of that uh, uh, influence <laughs> and that that, that 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 capacity. So they are looking at what uh, PDP as Nigeria. In other words, how can you compare APC? What happened in APC with what happened in PDP? Once you PDP determines its own way by what is happening with APC, the the PDP the APC is the only party that has moral grant not to give its ticket to any northern again because the current president from is from the north so and, and is a party so pdp the original, the original formula did not is, is we're not there's no breach of any any original uh, uh, formula in that in that in that regard because like i said the last president from the pdp is from the south and you see the other point he made about regarding Elijah Atiku Abaka is saying, uh, uh, I think it's not correct. It's not correct that uh, he said he wants to continue something uh, 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 where he stopped in, the, in in a way. That is not that is not correct. That's that's a wrong impression. He didn't say that at all. He has his agenda, five 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 point agenda, and there was nothing like that in that agenda, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you see, the 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 difference between PDP and the particularly Labour Party is far 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 ahead. We are we are, we are running other meter. We are already at 80, 80, 80, 80 meter. To the, to the tape, they are still at 20 meter uh, gaps, and that's why they are doing what they are doing now. So you can't compare PDP and uh, Labour Party together. We are not we are not on the same uh, uh, platform. They are, they are they are far far behind uh, PDP. They don't have the structure that we have, and that's why they are going through all this all this all this threats they are going through. So right. if you, if you say you see the issue of the, the, the G5 fighting about injustice, it's not correct. Look at if the if that is true, even the Where Labour the Party, they don't have they don't have the to say so. Uh, because I, because I, Labour I, Party, I'm, I'm going to take it up from here. Uh, thank you so much. I, let, let, I'm sorry, let me I'm sorry let, to cut you short. We will, let me you will let me get conclude. the chance. You will get the chance. Let me conclude. You, everybody okay. will get a chance to conclude and give their final words. But for now, we need we need to take a quick break. Uh, we're going for the news, and when we return, you, uh, Barista Tunji, and of course Ibrahim, everybody will get a chance to give their final words. We have two gentlemen, one from the uh, PDP and the other one from. Uh, uh, the Labour Party, and we were just to take their final words before we wrap up this show because they, there was a lot boiling in their hearts, <laughs> in, their, in their bellies, as yes. people would say. So let's just pour them out. Um, we have like uh, two minutes for each of them. Let's begin with you, uh, the PDP chief team. Barista, <laughs> we're beginning with you because you had the final word uh, cut from you when you were still talking. So let's just get a final word from you uh, about things happening in your party and about what Nigerians should expect and your chances, if you can cram all that into two minutes, please. Yeah, I was just trying to correct an impression which uh, make a PDP look like a, a, a party that don't, don't respect a, a fairness or justice. We are talking about fairness or justice. Uh, the, the Labour Party has no moral right to even say so. The chairman of the Labour Party, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, the DG campaign of the Labour Party, they are from the South and they are complaining about PDP, that they, they have the chairman from the South, uh, from the North, and the president from the federal candidate from the North. The Governor Wiki and Co., who are also complaining about the fairness or justice or whatever, because the chairman and the presidential candidate are from the same place. Uh, check what happened in the University. Where is Governor Wiki from? Where is Governor Rodman? They are from the same place. The, governor, the current governor candidate of the, of the PDP in the and from the same state from the, from the chairman. So all the, and the, the the candidates of the PDP in River State were singularly picked by Governor Wiki, and he's talking about fairness and justice. The the author of Autumn, Autumn who's part of the G5, he was the one who edited the 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 committee regarding Sony. He said they, they, they should throw it open. So and we they now they now won and they now lost the election. And, and when I say they now, I'm talking about G5 because they believe they will, they will, they've done their work. To win that election and they and, and they, they lost and that is the, that is the, that is the cross of the matter it's not about justice or fairness so let people understand that so what i'm saying is that with or without the g5 the pdp has done enough to win this 2023 election alaji atiku abakar is, is ahead of all the candidates he, is, he has he has he has the capacity he has the experience he has the knowledge he has he has the 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 destabilized nigeria he is, is well is known across board. He's not just starting to put up the, the structure as the Labour Party and the other people are doing now. 
the APC is well known in Lagos State, and that the governorship, the penal candidate of the APC, is just is just a, a, a local champion in Lagos State. He has never been at national level, so he, he will learn on the job if given the opportunity. So as far as I'm concerned, the the what what we are enjoying today in the in our democracy, they were all part of the work of Alaja to work at the EFCC was part of it. The the, the ICPC, the all the institutions regarding uh, corrupt fight, fight against corruption, he was part of the system. The economy, he was in charge at that time. He brought Okonjo Wala. He brought uh, the former, uh, uh, the late uh, Akuili. He brought Erufai. He brought so many of the people who are, who are celebrating today into the system. And you are saying he's not qualified. To, uh, he's, not, he's, not, he's not ahead of other people. Tell me what and what the other people have done. The APC candidate has, has never been at the national, at, at national level. He has never worked at the national level. The 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 highest the uh, Labour Party candidate has done at the highest level is to be SA to to the uh, former uh, President Jonathan, and that you can't compare that with the vice president for eight years. So I think uh, when we talk about the two parties, the 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 difference between PDP and other other parties uh, cannot cannot even be uh, talked. We are not we are apart. There are only two parties that I know: PDP and others. To get, get your you attention, to, to to just give us a moment to uh, do some things, you know, still converse with you. Okay, maybe we'll have maybe we'll have a, a little time on our hands. We can come back to you, but uh, we need to hear from uh, uh, Mr. Ibrahim also uh, to talk to us and give us his words, uh, because there's something when you were talking earlier that came up that we must have to unravel for people not to misunderstand. But now, let it be the time for Mr. Ibrahim Abdul Karim to talk to us. Thank, thank you very much. I think um, uh, we're not supposed to sit down and just think of uh, everybody is just a politician in Nigeria. We are Nigerian first before we are party members. So, so nobody can come here and bamboozle Nigeria on the issue of party and the party structure and what party can do. That's not what we're talking about. We are talking about for us to exist as people to unite as people, to push ourselves to the where we want to take. We already, we already suffered enough. Nigeria have seen it bad. Everybody is crying. We can't go back. Because let me tell you, it's the same article you are talking about that move away from AP, from, from, from PDP, join PDP, we, 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 we join APC with Saraki and others and defeated his party. So are you talking about somebody being a party person, somebody? No, we are beyond that party, whatever you are talking about. What we are talking about, we are talking about, like, for example, in Big Tent, it's just a group of professional Nigerians. We just believe that we will create the dot force. We will get behind somebody that we feel he will unite this country because that's the essence of where we wants to go. Let me tell you, the presidency of Pistem, why even Atiku picked Peter Obi in 2019 is because he knows he's a good man. And all of you celebrated him. All of you tell us that he can help Atiku to manage the economy. That's what you told us in 2019. Then now he now become nobody. He now become he cannot do anything because he's not in your party. You, you, the only thing you are telling Nigerians is the party. Go to Sokoto, go to Benekabi, go and see what PDP people has done to Nigerians. It's the same PDP people that moved today. Abdullah Adamu that is heading APC. It's not from AP from, from PDP. Apabio is not from, from PDP. All these people that we have seen in this government is not from PDP. What we are seeing is that it's about Nigerians. Where is the traction going to? I tell you, this, this leadership that you have, the APC and PDP ticket are toxic uh, tickets that are going to give a very, very bad presidency in the future. We are not talking about today. And I'm giving you an example. I said, if, for example, uh, because your candidate is saying that the last president you have is in AP, is Jonathan, so, so you are skipping General Mamadou Buhari. So when the Labour Party become the greatest party, maybe by 2031, and now they now put me on top and said, we don't even have a president, so we are going to start from the north. See, Nigeria is a country that have north and the south, Muslims and Christians, and we have to, let me tell you what is missing in this country, for us to get a leader that will manage our diversity. That's just what we need. We all have, but we don't want leaders that will create more of the problem. We, we just want a leader that will come and say, okay, this is Yoruba, this is Hausa, this is Muslim, this is Christian. But what we have is to build a nation that is going to be envied of everybody in the world. We have our people in diaspora, people that are very talented, very educated. We have the raw materials on the ground. We have a very good weather. What we need is that we have a fault line, a fault line of tribal and religious dissent. How will we, your presidency, 
push that decent and close that gap. That's what we are asking. We are not asking a party. You don't, nobody can come and tell us rubbish us because of party and t- belittle people because of party. We are not going to. Here I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm not even a, a co-party person. Any other person that is listening to me here, it's not a, he doesn't care who become what from what party. What we want is a new Nigeria, a place where all of us will lie down and sleep. So we know what the bombings that happened. We know the Boko Haram issue during... during well, nobody can gaslight us to just think that nothing happened during, during, during the PDP. We know a lot of things happened. Nobody will tell us nothing happened. See, our idea in Big Ten is that let's keep changing these politicians. It, it got into their head that the powers belongs to people. Let me tell you, if we put Mr. Peter Obi in 2023, and by 2027, we feel he's not uniting Nigeria, we are not progressing, we are not moving forward, we still rally around another person, not in APC, not in Labour, not in PDP, so that at least every good man in Nigeria can choose one of the 18 parties if he knows what he's doing, not thinking of any structure, structure of what? Structure of corruption? Mm-hmm. That's about structure. We will, we will let people to, to know that if I come if you want to vote, vote people irrespective of you can vote APC, Labour Party, PDP, issue as discretion. If they put a good person that knows people, you can go to your primaries in Kano, for example, or in other places, send the people that you want to send away, take some, some somebody that paid money, and now he become a computer candidate. And then at the end you tell me that this is the person that I would Mr. Abdul Karim. Uh, thank you very much. I, I even said that um, we're going to come back to Barista Tunji, but our time has run up, um, run out rather, <laughs> uh, at this time. But we're hoping we'll have another opportunity with you guys uh, some other time so that we can finish dealing with this. I'm hoping that whatever the questions are in the PDP or the Labour Party, they, they, we didn't exhaust them today. No, we didn't. Uh, and we're going to find time to give you guys the opportunity again to talk to us. At that time, we'll know whether in the PDP there's a crisis or there's a misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. In the Labour Party, we'll know whether there's a, there's a structure or there's just a social media presence. We will find out all of these things. But for now, we'd like to say thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. thank you. So, <laughs> a very passionate and heated session, yeah. Uh, I must say, Barrister Tunji Abdul Hamid of the PDP and Ibrahim Abdul Karim of the Labour Party. Well, it's these people put together. Well, it has been fiery. Is it just me or the PDP? Are they really not speaking with one voice? Because we had a conversation with one of them last week, mm-hmm. and he assured us mm-hmm. that uh, the PDP is going to unify. And I mean, by last week, we're still in mm-hmm. 2022. Yeah. Uh, he assured us that PDP was going to unify and that they would not move into the election proper without one, uh, a one complete party yeah. family. Uh, and uh, I mean, Barrister Tunji said a, a very totally different uh, things today about how that whether with the G5 or not he believes the PDP has done enough to get them the number one seat in Nigeria uh, and that 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 kind of strikes a chord and I, and I believe it, it would strike a chord with a lot of other people who mm. listened to this conversation today because how do you want to go into a critical situation like uh, the general elections I mean the presidential seat of a country like Nigeria with a divided house uh, I'm hoping that before that time comes the PDP would be able to heal the wounds five uh, governors is quite a number yes for, for a party that doesn't have the the power in the center how many governors are there of the pdp that you will still remove five and mm. expect to make a mark in the forthcoming election like i said the fate of the politicians is more than a mustard seed <laughs> <laughs> in fact uh, but what one thing that worried me in the course of his talking to us this morning is that um he he said that nigerians are looking at pdp as nigeria but they are a party so it means that it doesn't matter if in 2027, um, mm. uh, a northerner comes from another party, so long as it's not from uh, Labour Party or PDP or APC, it is all right because that's not Nigeria. So the zoning does not affect the parties. They can make their own choices. Mm. Okay, so that's, that's why 
if the president is coming from the north, PDP can now choose someone from the north because it doesn't matter. They are not the ones that are in power. So next time, uh, another maybe AAC will choose someone from the north. It doesn't matter whether the sitting president is from the north, uh, so long as you are from a different party. And for and a party it gives that me concern. started the, the, for the party that started the whole zoning conversation mm. in the first place. Yes. Uh, I mean, y'all can do better. So it will now even give APC an edge because APC will say, okay, when we came in, we saw that the president was from the south, so we brought an, a northerner. Maybe that was not their intention. I'm hoping it but they will not use that. it as, uh, as something to say, okay, we, we, we understand the sensitivity of that uh, office and everything, what Nigerians will feel. I think... PDP should look into that and mm. see how they can talk to Nigerians to convince us. But it's not enough to just tell us that we are not APC and we are not Nigeria. Who else is Nigeria, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> because once you become a president, it doesn't matter the party that you are. Yes. We'll, they will we'll be looking at you as, okay, your competency, competence, yes. Where are you from? What are some of the things that will make Nigerians have confidence in you and stay united? Mm -hmm. And you tell us that you're not Nigeria so you can take any decision. Mm. Uh, we're hoping that, you know, uh, as we're looking at the preparedness of the candidates, uh, the political parties vying for the number one seat in Nigeria, we're hoping that we would have other representatives of other parties, uh, just like Barista Tunji and Ibrahim came today, come talk to us about their own uh, candidates mm -hmm. and how prepared they are. Uh, I'm hoping that we will not have the case that has been repeating itself about some people avoiding conversations and town halls. Uh, maybe you need to come and talk about your candidates. You, you might be doing yourself a good service, mm. if I'm to use that word. Well, we are in the village square waiting. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to ask you the relevant questions. Tell us what you plan to do. Tell us uh, the things that are worrying us as, at this moment. But uh, if they do not come, well, there's nothing we can do. Mm. But if they do come, Nigerians will also have the opportunity to hear them. And they also will have the opportunity to win the hearts of Nigerians. And do not forget that you still have the opportunity to go ahead and pick up your PVC. It is your right to vote uh, and I would advise that you clench it <laughs> and fully uh, exercise that right. It is very important. Uh, you still have the opportunity to get your PVCs. Please go ahead and do it. The run-up will return but it will be tomorrow at 11 a.m. Until then, my name is Uchechuku Onodo. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Thanks for being there.